Hello students, I am Dr. Arpita De. The topic for today's discussion is ecology and environment. Now let's quickly see what's there in the discussion today. First of all, we'll be talking about the concept of environment followed by habitat and niche and finally we'll be talking about ecological pyramids. Now let's first come to what is environment. Environment is everything that we see around us, that's there around us. It includes all biotic and abiotic factors that encompass us. It is a particular or specified area in an environment where a living organism sustains its life. This is habitat. So habitat is a part of the environment. Environment is the entire surrounding and Habitat is a specified part over there. It is a particular location, you can say, where the living organism is sustaining its life. It has a number of niches and normally supports a good number of species. Okay, so in a nutshell, it can be said that it's a specified area in the environment where a living organism grow multiply and thereby sustain its life. It is the physical place occupied by the organism. Now we'll come to niche. What is niche? The term has been developed and used by an ecologist, an eminent ecologist known as Grinnell. It is more of a concept that deals with the role and position of an organism along with its tolerance limitations and requirements in the environment. Niche, on the other hand, deals with the function or activity of an organism in that particular habitat or ecosystem. It reflects the organism's intricate association with the biotic and abiotic factors of the environment. Now, niche is a type of a job, you can say. It is the reaction of that organism with its uh, with its conditions that are there in the environment how is it reacting with the biotic and abiotic factors how is it using the energy resources in that particular uh, niche or how is it actually facing struggles how is it coming out of those struggles it is overall the job of the organism in that particular habitat. So we can say niche is a total range of environmental gradients where the organism sustains its life. Niche can be of two types. One is the fundamental niche. The other is the realized niche. Fundamental niche is the maximum inhabited hypervolume, which is more of a theoretical concept. On the other hand, realized niche is the real scenario where the organism is living. It is the smaller hypervolume. Members of a species actually don't live in the fundamental niches. They are rather found in realized niche. Fundamental niche gives an account of various ecological roles of a species but realized niche specifically refers to what it actually does. Often while studying the concept of niche, we come across two words, niche overlap and niche width. Niche width is the extent of area, extent occupied by the organism. This is known as niche width and niche overlap is this shaded region. Species A is occupying this niche. Species B is occupying this niche. Now there is an overlap. A small area in these two triangles are seen to be common. This shaded common region is the overlapped region or niche overlap.
talk about the model of energy flow. Energy flows in an ecosystem in a unidirectional manner. It is unidirectional that is it is flowing from the producer to successive levels of consumer. And another important point is amount of energy flow falls with successive trophic levels. That means what the content of energy or the amount of energy that is there in the level of producer is more than that is there in the levels of successive consumers. The idea of energy pyramids or energy flow model is based on these two points. It is unidirectional and the flow or of energy, the content of energy falls with successive trophic levels. Now we'll come to ecological pyramid. Ecological pyramids are manifestations of relationships that exist between the trophic levels of an ecosystem. The base of the pyramid is normally represented by the primary producers and the apex or the apical part is represented by the tertiary consumers. This concept of ecological pyramid was developed by Charles Elton and it is also known as Eltonian pyramids. The first pyramid that we will be considering here in the discussion is pyramid of number. Quantitative representation of Number of individuals present at each trophic levels of an ecosystem is given by the pyramid of number. Where do we get to see this? We get to see this normally in grassland ecosystem and in aquatic ecosystem. Here we see it is absolutely upright. At the right at the base we see the primary producer followed by primary consumer, secondary consumer and then finally comes a tertiary consumer. The number of producers are largest that is at the base following a decrease in number in the successively higher trophic levels. Next here we have an array of different types of pyramids. First we'll be talking about pyramid of biomass. Pyramid of biomass can be of two types either an upright one or an inverted one. In an upright one we see the Biomass of producer is greater than that of consumer. Very popular example is terrestrial ecosystem. On contrary, in an inverted one, we see the biomass of consumer is greater than that of the producer and the signature example of this type is an aquatic ecosystem. Here we see gradual fall of total dry weight of organisms from base to apex. Then comes pyramid of energy. This is also an upright one. Manifestation of laws of thermodynamics is always to be considered while studying pyramid of energy. Considerable loss of energy is seen at successive uh, trophic levels here. The amount of energy drastically decrease at various trophic levels from the base to the apex. The shorter the food chain, the more the content of energy at highest trophic levels. This is an important point to be considered while studying the pyramid. Next coming to partially upright pyramids. This is seen in forest ecosystem. Here we see the producer is little less in comparison to that of the primary consumer. Again the secondary consumer on top of that gives the partially upright pyramidal structure. An inverted one is seen in parasitic food chain. Here the producer is pretty less in comparison to that of the consumer. Here the single producer supports huge number of consumer. Discussion of help to you. Thank you so much.